Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Vicious and welcome to a brand new product review. Today I have one that I told you I'd bring you a long time ago, which is the uh, Vio E17. So here it is right here. This is the E17 in person. And here's the box that it came in. So we're going to be doing this review in uh, three parts. The introduction, which is this. And then we're moving into the unboxing. And then finally I'm going to wrap up everything in a review. The reason I did it like that is I actually have Miss Vicious helping us with this one and she did the unboxing for us. So we'll cut to that next. Introduction, that's what's first. What is the E17 in case you didn't look up this video for a review and you just stumbled across it? It is a really nice and portable. I mean, look at the size of it compared to my hand. And it's really nice brushed aluminum. This thing is amazingly high quality feeling. This is a DAC, which of course is layman's for a external sound card. And it is a headphone amplifier. So if you had an iPod uh, or your phone and you wanted to use a bigger headphones and your device could not power those headphones on its own, you can use this as an amplifier. But its most important feature and what it would be really best to purchase it for is the sound card feature because through USB on your computer or through um, SPDIF via optical or the uh, coaxial, you can convert all of your digital sound into analog sound using this device and therefore skip the sound card that's in your device and this will be a much higher quality. So let's go ahead and jump into the unboxing and then when we come back from that, we will do the full review. Hello and welcome to the unboxing portion of the E17 video. Today, Miss Vicious will be doing the unboxing for us instead of me. That way I could hold the camera and I'll give you the audio commentary. We already have the main unit out since I was reviewing it and I wanted to show you how much it matches the product on the front of the box. Inside of the box, we have all of the accessories these are giant rubber bands that basically attach the E17 to your mobile device, such as your phone or iPod. This is an auxiliary cable. It is the uh, 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter, so you can use the auxiliary input. And this is your optical adapters, one for the RCA connection and one for the uh, squared version of the optical connection. Behind that, we have uh, a, a nice carrying pouch for it that snaps shut. And here is the included USB cable that you use for connecting it as a DAC to your computer or for charging the device. Now let's take a tour of the E17 itself. It's got a nice brushed aluminum finish on the entire outside of it. A few buttons and ports that we're going to show you. First things first is the power button. You can see this is a self-powered device. It does have an internal battery. It gives you a lot of information on the top of the LCD screen as far as your connection and output and your volume. So the first buttons next to that screen are the volume up and down keys. Below that we have the menu button to access the full menu options, the input to choose our input, and hold is there in case you have this in your pocket and you're using it with a mobile device. When it's in hold mode you can't accidentally press any buttons. Now let's start taking a tour around the rest of the unit to look at the inputs and outputs that we have available. We'll start with the top where we have our SPDIF input a small reset switch, and our headphone output. SPIDF uses those adapters we saw, so you can use optical or coaxial. Down at the bottom, we have our USB input, and we have the proprietary connection in the middle, and we have our auxiliary in on the right. Over on the side, we have the uh, line out bypass. It looks like it says low bypass. And on the final side, it's just a nice clean aluminum siding. So that's all the inputs and outputs the E17 contains and we'll go ahead and get into detail of all those now. Here's the uh, menu. As you can see, we have a sleep function. We have a maximum volume function. The uh, volume memory function, which means if you turn the unit on or off, it remembers where you had it last. System firmware version. You can control the treble, and also you can control the bass on this unit, which is a really nice feature. We have a balance for left and right balance. And then we also have a gain setting in here, which is very useful if you use uh, smaller IEMs. After that, you'll see that the menu starts to loop over itself, and that was all the options that we had in there. Since the unit is battery controlled, of course, you'll go ahead and manually turn this off by holding down the power button when you're done using it. Otherwise, it'll drain your battery. Other than that, that was the unboxing, and we covered the inputs and outputs. We'll go ahead and wrap up all of these features in the review. 
All right, everybody, welcome back from the unboxing. And now let's talk about everything you just saw and go over the full review of the unit. Is this something you would like to purchase? Is it worth how much it costs? And let's explain some of those features that we just pointed out in the unboxing video. First, let's talk about the features. Most of the buttons are self-explanatory for most of you as far as volume, menu, input obviously lets you choose between the different input sources. Are you gonna use the SPDIF input, which is digital? Are you gonna be using the USB input on the bottom, which is from your computer? Or are you gonna be using the auxiliary input, which is when you're just amplifying an existing device like your iPod or your phone? Inside of the menu tree though, you saw the um, bass and treble. Those are important features I wanna talk about. A lot of DACs don't have that feature because they usually wanna be very pure and not alter the original audio in any way. And I was always a purist. I actually really enjoy having that clean, un uh, unmodified sound. But as you saw when we went through the menu, I had the bass bumped up on here. And the reason is because sometimes, depending on the type of music you're listening to, you might want to alter the way it sounds a little bit. Also, you might have a specific uh, pair of headphones or uh, earbuds that just don't sound the way you would like them to out of the box. And you can kind of compensate for it with those bass and treble alterations. So I think that's a really nice feature, and I have to say it was implemented very well on here because it doesn't sound really muddy and distorted until you take it to the highest levels. At like six where I had it, it added a noticeable amount of bass to my music, and it still sounded really, really good. So that was a really important feature that was on here that I really enjoyed. Let's talk about the fact that it's also a self-powered device. There is an internal battery in here, and it's very easy to charge through USB. So just plug it into a computer with power through USB and you can charge this up. And then you'll get several hours of life out of it using it on the go with a mobile device. Personally, I only used it with my computers, so I never had to use the battery itself. But if I wanted to use it for that feature, it's really good to know that it's there. The other confusing thing that probably nobody would know about without owning one is this line out bypass, that low bypass. What that does is on the bottom, that proprietary port we talked about, you can connect two different FIO accessories that I know of. One of them is the L7, and what that does, if you connect that and you turn that switch on, you can actually totally bypass the amp inside of this unit and only send out the converted signal. It'll convert from digital to analog for you. That's what the DAC does, digital to analog converter, and it will send that analog signal out to a different amplifier. So if you have a really nice home theater system and you wanna use this as your DAC, you can actually do that. The other thing it works for is, I think it's the E9, which is a nice big desktop amplifier. You can plug this directly into the top of it, there's a slot for it, and you can use this as the DAC for that amplifier. So those are the two things I know that bottom slot is good for. Let's wrap up things with, is it worth it? Is it nice? Is it high quality? First of all, build quality is absolutely, absolutely amazing. The LCD screen looks really nice. It's a really nice and hefty feeling in your hands. The whole thing is encased in black brushed aluminum. It's just, it feels like it was built to last forever and it looks amazing. So really happy with that. The sound quality is on par or better than any other DAC I've used. You know, I have some really expensive ones connected to my desktop and I've also used other portable ones like the uh, New Force UDAC 2. But this one definitely sounds just as good or not better than. So the performance of the DAC is amazing. The quality of the amp also very good. Uh, one of the issues I had with the New Force UDAC 2 was the impedance of my headphones. If I used my in-ear monitors, which were very sensitive, I would sometimes get like a, uh, a humming when I had low volumes. And if you wanted to plug in big headphones, it'd be fine. But with this, because it does have an adjustable gain, you can turn the gain all the way down and not get that humming or hissing or any noise with sensitive headphones, and then you can crank it up if you need to for the bigger, higher, harder to drive headphones. So I think every feature I've looked for in a amplifier or a DAC was somehow packed into this little device. And even though they have newer models coming out now, I would not hesitate even for a moment to get this one again. So if there was any other questions I didn't cover as far as reviewing the E17, just comment on the video and I'll go ahead and answer those for you. Of course, any other likes and uh, just ideas, I'm always open for that as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the review. This was Vicious, and I'll see you guys next time.